Inhale, head down, deep inhale. Bring your head down slowly to the straight position. So as your chin goes down into the knuckles, head stays back over the spine. So you can lift your chest, suck your stomach in, spine straight and hold it. Exhale, head up, push your head back with the help of your hands. Now bring your elbows forward away from your chest, body weight back on the heels and tighten the hips a little bit more as you go, especially at the end. Nice job. Inhale, head down, deep inhale. That's it. So what are we doing? We're always trying to find the spine straight position. Chin goes down into the knuckles, lift your chest, suck your stomach in, head straight position, elbows up. Exhale, head up, push your head back with the help of your hands and bring your elbows forward. Body weight on the heels, and then you can start to push the hips forward and tighten them up more. So there's no backward bending. We're always looking for the spine straight. Good. Inhale, head down, deep inhale. And if you feel a little bit backward bending as you're figuring things out, that's fine. Just feel it out until you can find the spine straight. Fill your lungs, maximum expansion capacity all of the way as much as possible. Exhale, head up, push your head back with the help of your hands and bring your elbows forward. So you lift your chest, weight back on the heels and tighten the hips a little bit more as you go to keep the spine stretching up. Inhale, head down. One, two, three, four, five, six, and hold it. Exhale, head up, push your head back. One, two, three, four, five, six, and hold it. Inhale, head down very slowly. Use your throat. Lift your chest. Suck your stomach in. So you feel the waist pull back. You get a little bit of lift up out of the waist. You suck your stomach in and tighten the abdominal muscles. Spine straight and hold it. Good. Exhale, head up, push your head back. Bring the elbows forward. Keep lifting the chest. Body weight back on the heels and tighten the hips. Beautiful spine straights today. Elbows touch. Inhale, head down. Just one more in the first set. I'm going to do it. just a few little bit less today since we start a little bit late. Expand your rib cage. If you can stretch the intercostal muscles and then lift the chest, good spine straight position and hold it. Good. Exhale, head up, push your head back with the help of your hands and bring your elbows forward. Yeah, keep that waist back over the heel so you can tighten the hips and keep stretching your spine. Good job, Karen. Good. And then let the arms relax down by your side. So take a little bit of something. Sometimes you might feel yourself kind of wavering a little bit. You're always looking how to continue to create that stretching connection through the spine on the inhale or the exhale. Second one, feet together nicely, reinterlock your fingers back underneath the chin. <clears throat> nice and relax your shoulders, concentrate, meditate one spot, swallow a couple of times. And start, please. Inhale, bring your elbows up towards the ceiling. Arms and head motion are synchronizing. So you move them together in six seconds and you figure out what to shift around along the way. Exhale, head up, push your head back with the help of your hands, and then take six seconds to empty the lungs. Get all the air out, all this. So the more you empty the lungs, you're going to be able to pull in more air when we do the next one. Inhale, head down. Chin goes down into the knuckles, knuckles slightly resist. Head goes back over the spine, lift your chest, suck your stomach in. Fill your lungs maximum expansion capacity as much as possible. Exhale, head up, push your head back. Now you bring the elbows forward away from your chest. So your shoulders and your deltoids are coming forward and then you gotta keep the body back over the hips and tighten the hips to keep stretching the spine. Beautiful. Inhale, head down, deep inhale. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then hold it. Exhale, head up, push your head back. One, two, three, four, five, six, and hold it. Inhale, head down. As the slower you go, better you do. Take your time. That's it. Then you end up using the lungs more when you can figure out the alignment a little bit better. Expand the rib cage, spine straight, head down, full, full, full lungs. Exhale, head up, push your head back. And start to bring the elbows forward a little bit earlier, Antonio. Don't wait till the end. It's a synchronized motion. And then you got to figure out how to keep tightening the hips and lifting the chest and stacking the spine. Elbows touch. Inhale, head down. This is so all the pressure is not just going into the neck and the upper back. Synchronizing the motion and then figure out the body weight distribution and how to connect everything. Fill your lungs all the way and hold it. Exhale, head up and head back. So right away, elbows come forward. Arms and head are moving synchronized and then figure out how to tighten the hips and keep lifting the chest and stretching the spine, connecting the legs. Yes, inhale, head down. One, two, three, four, five, six, and hold it. Exhale, head up, push your head back, elbows forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, and hold it. Inhale, head down. Just two more here in the second set. 
So here's what we want to do. I know you've heard this before, but really do it. At the end, when you're like, I'm done, my lungs are completely full. See if you can find a way to pull in a little bit more air. Exhale, head up, push your head back with the help of your hands. Bring the elbows forward, right? Sometimes it's like, we don't know until we try. Relax your shoulders and tighten the hips and keep the weight back on the heels to keep everything connected. Elbows touch, nice Karen. Inhale, head down. Last one. Maximum expansion capacity, a lot of oxygen happening here. You might even feel a little bit dizzy, full, full lungs. Exhale, head up and head back. And then when you're done, elbows touch, lungs empty. Let the arms relax down by your side. All right. We got the rib cage to expand a little bit. We stretch the lungs. We strengthen and stretch the muscles around the lungs so you can breathe better throughout the class. Now we're going to work into the spine, half moon pose. Please breathe in and out by the nose. Feet together nicely. Bring the arms above your head sideways, palms together. You need to lock your fingers, release your index fingers, thumbs cross. And then glue the palms together all the way to the wrists. That's how they go. So when you stretch up the arms, you get that connection and go right and left, right and left. So what you're doing, you should feel a stretching feeling down both sides of your body all the way through the fingertips. You should think like you're trying to touch the ceiling, which is above you. Sometimes I just see people going right and left, like flop, flop, flop. Uh, each time you're stretching up to the arms to get the fist to the fingertips with the palms together, this is how you get along the sides of the rib cage. And then when you don't push too hard, just the direction. And then when you can't stretch anymore, stop in the middle. Elbows locked, arms of the ears, no gap between the bison ear. Hips a little bit forward, hips and pelvis opening up, upper body back a couple of inches, chest and rib cage opening up, head straight position, arms and head back. Inhale, breathing, and then stretch up out of your waist. Try to touch the ceiling one more time. Absolutely straight line, slowly bend to the right side without bending your elbows or your knees. Push your hips towards the left side to start to create a stretching feeling through the whole left side of your body. Inside out, bones to the skin, fingertips to the toes. That's perfect, right? Where you are, Monica. And now just work the adjustments. A little bit stretch the arms, upper body back, body weight in the heels. Yeah. More you do upper body, back body weight in the heels, you start to get that lift and then you can push the hips forward a little bit more. But your goal is to create a connection through the whole left side of the body. That's it, Aurelia. Now, as much as you can without pain. Yeah, that's it. Slowly just stretch the arms. Every time you find space, reach through the arms. That's it. Left hip forward, keeping the two hips in one line, right shoulder forward, opening the chest, come down and push and push and push. Inhale, breathe in, come up and stop in the middle. Nothing stays the same in the posture. So sometimes you get stuck against something and then we don't do anything else. But then if you actually go for it again, you can do more. Body weight in the heels. Inhale, breathing, fill your lungs, stretch up out of your waist, slowly bend to the left side without bending your elbows or your knees, push your hips to the right side. So he's like, we're always looking for what's missing. So if the arms aren't straight right now, you don't have to force them straight but don't forget about them in the posture. There's the hips to the right side so you start to create a stretching feeling down the whole right side of the body, fingertips to the toes. Beautiful. This is it, Alex. The hips forward, upper body, back weight in the heels. Now see if you can bring the waist back over the heels and get the chest to lift so you can get a little bit. And then, yeah, this is the beautiful one. See how that drops the left shoulder back. This is why we say, bring your left shoulder forward, opening your chest like a flower petal blooming. Come down and push and push and push. Inhale, breathe and come up, stop in the middle. Nice, Monica. Yeah, so don't be scared if that shoulder drops back. That's why that correction's in there. Next is a backward bend. Back's gonna hurt, don't be scared. Take a deep breath, full lungs. Drop your head back as far as it will go. Look for the floor behind you and bring the arms back immediately and try to touch the wall behind you. That's it. So bend your total spine, backward bending. Lower back, middle back, upper back. The total spine is backward bending. That's it. And then push your upper body back like you're trying to fall down backwards. That's it, Antonio. I want you to really think about reaching out of the shoulders and locking the elbows. That will cause your chest to maybe lift a little bit as you connect along the sides of the rib cage. So it's okay to get the, the chest to move when you reach out of the shoulders, but make sure that it's because you're stacking the spine. Yeah, just keep reaching. How can I get the palms together more? How can I reach out of the shoulders more? How can I get all that stuff to open up and drop my head back more? Weight in the heels. Go back, fall back, way back, more back. Inhale, breathing, come up, stop in the middle. Great, everybody. And then bend your knees, bring your hands down onto the floor in front of you. Don't tense up if I get excited with my voice, right? You guys are moving nice and relaxed. I just get excited, yeah? <laughs> move the hips right and left, right and left, right and left. He's like, you never realize like how much beneficial, how much you can relax. You will always find a deeper level of how much you can relax to have more things happen in this practice, right? It's tension that we hold on to that prevents our body from shifting things around. So you have to learn what it is that you have to tighten and what it is that you have to relax. You can optimize the posture. And a lot of times we're just holding on to stuff that we don't need to 
And then as you release that stuff, you can actually push harder. Hands to feet pose, parayastasana. Bend your knees, grab your heels from behind, underneath the heels. Stepping on all five fingers of each hand, the little baby finger is touching side by side. Elbows are behind your legs on the calf muscle the entire time throughout the posture. Get a nice grip and don't lose the grip. Pull your heels, stretching your upper body from the lower spine down to the floor. Touch your stomach to the thighs and your chest to the knees and the face to the legs below your knees. So from the side, this should look like Japanese ham sandwich. There is no gap anywhere. And then slowly push your knees back as much as possible. You're trying to create stretching underneath the legs. The more you bring the elbows behind your legs, the more you can get your body to come in closer to the legs, even if you don't have the hands underneath the feet yet. And then you roll more body weight forward to the toes and lift your hips and push your knees back. And you get the elbows back and pull the body in closer to the legs. That's how you can stretch the spine more. That's it. And then the pulling is the object of the stretching. You can release the tension in your back muscles. Good, roll forward, pull harder and push your knees back. Try to lock your knees, lock your knees, lock your knees. Inhale, breathing, come back up, arms and head together. And then when you're up, arms come down and relax by your side. <clears throat> okay, round two, feet together nicely. Bring arms up over the head, touch your palms together. Palms are glued together. Interlock the fingers, release the index fingers, thumbs crossed, stretch the arms up to get the elbows locked and the arms of the ears and the chin to come away from the chest. And then inhale, breathing full lungs, stretch up out of your waist. Slowly bend to the right side without bending your elbows or your knees. Push your hips to the left side to create stretching fingertips to the toes. I said, yeah, the push of the hips will get the body to bend a little bit. And then don't worry about how far you come down. Now it is your goal to create a stretching feeling from your fingertips to the toes through the whole left side of the body. If you're disconnected, you use this. Hips forward, upper body back, body weight in the heels. Arms and head back to get the head again straight with the spine so you can keep the chin away from the chest. And every time you create space, you reach through the arms if they're not straight yet. Good, left hip forward, keeping the two hips in one line, right shoulder forward, opening the chest like a flower petal blooming. Then you can find a little bit more depth, come down and push and push and push. Inhale, breathe and come up, stop in the middle. Okay, one more time, let the weight press nicely into the feet, stretch the arms. Inhale, breathe and fill your lungs and stretch up out of your waist and then slowly bend to the left side. I said, you don't have to rush to give up with me, but just start the movement a little bit. Just push the hips a little bit. I said, the pushing the hips at the beginning, if you haven't got all the connection, it might break the connection. That's fine. But then just find it with your adjustments. Hips forward, upper body back, weight in the heels, palms together. So you can bring the arms a little bit more back with the ears, Alex. And then, so it might feel like your chin goes down when you bring the head back in line with the spine. Yeah, and then you'll get a stretch through the spine. It will give you more space between the chin and the chest. So we're not tilting the head back. We're just keeping that head back. Yeah, in a straight position. Beautiful. Oh my God. Right hip forward, keeping the two hips in one line. Left shoulder forward, opening the chest. Good, Courtney. Come down and push and push and push. Inhale, breathe and come up and stop. And Yeah, you can save that depth for the end, but you get the best connection. Okay, backward bend, second set. Take a deep breath, full lungs, drop your head back as far as it goes. So see if you can bring weight to the heels right now, Antonio, and reach your arms up out of the shoulders. It's like right now, like I wanna feel like you wanna touch the ceiling, but reach the arms, weight to the heels and stretch out of the shoulders. Weight to the heels, stretch out of the shoulders. So you can feel the rib cage connect with the rest of the, the spine. Yeah, and then see if you can bring the arms back a little bit better now. Yeah, every time you get like a little bit of clap, you might feel the shoulders tighten up. So you gotta keep finding a way to open those shoulders and reach back. It's like you're doing balancing stick going backwards. More weight into the heels, more reach out of the shoulders, more elbows straight, more back, and then you can fall back even more. That's the one. This is the most relaxed I've ever seen. Good, push your upper body back, weight in the heels. See if you can go just a little bit straighter if it's possible through the arms, Alex, and then go back, fall back. Oh my gosh, that's it, way back, more back. You're trying to fall down backwards. Inhale, breathing, and come up. That's it, Karen. Yes, and then when you're up, bend your knees, bring your hands down onto the floor and move the hips. Yeah? See, it's like you can release tension in the back and you can keep stretching the arms harder, right? So it's like a lot of this stuff is like you have to figure out the relaxation that allows you the space to move more and then you can push harder. Move the hips right and left, relax your lower back, nice, loose, comfortable, easy, flexible. You turn from backward bend to forward bend. All right, I'm gonna kick it into a little bit high gear. You guys have been here before. Bend the knees, grab the heels from behind. If I talk faster, don't tense up more. Just see what you can figure out in the body. Elbows back behind the legs and pull. 
and stretch your upper body from the lower spine. Use it. Elbows back is the key. Don't make hands underneath the feet more important than elbows back. If you're grabbing from the sides, see what it takes to get the elbows to go back behind your legs and touch your baby fingers together. I don't even care if your hands are on the calves because once you get this body into the legs, you can stretch the spine and roll forward. You'll create more space to walk the hands down. But if you grab from the sides, you're stuck there forever. Elbows back and roll the weight forward into the toes so you can keep stretching your spine. This is a spine exercise. Your goal one day, someday, is to get the top of the head to go down to the feet, creating a 360 degree angle stretch, coccyx to the toes because you're rolling forward, and then coccyx to the head because you're keeping the body close to the legs and stretching the spine. The last chance, roll forward, keep pulling and stretch your spine and push your knees back. Try to lock your knees, lock your knees, lock your knees. Inhale, breathe in, come back up, arms and head together. Yeah, body to the legs is the goal in that posture. And then when you're up, arms relax down by your side. Okay, let's do the awkward pose, Utkatasana. <clears throat> right foot steps out to the right, six inches between the feet. Heels behind the toes. If you don't have a mirror, ankle joint underneath the hip joint, six inch gap. Bring arms up parallel to the floor. Yes, yeah, six inch gap in between. Five fingers together, elbows locked, tricep muscles, nice and tight contraction, nothing loose, nothing hanging. Stretch your arms forward, suck your stomach in, and then sit your hips into the chair. The feet flat position until the hips touch the chair and 100% body weight to the heels. That's it. Lift your chest and bend your total spine backward bending. Bring the upper body back. Very nice with the spine, everybody. Really get that chest to move so you can start to get the upper body back. And that usually makes the hips want to go forward. So you got to keep kind of sitting the hips back so you can get that little bit backward bend. Good. Reach forward out of the shoulders, chest up, lean back, fall back, way back. You're trying to fall down backwards. Inhale, breathing in, come up. Beautiful, everybody. Okay, the second part, keep the arms there, come up onto your toes, all the way as high as possible. That's it. Yeah, sometimes the shoulders are like, oh my gosh, you give them a little rest, bring the arms back up. Stretch your spine, chest, head, whole upper body up toward the ceiling like natural traction, and then sit the, down on the tops of the toes. From start to finish, you should feel your hips and your head touching the wall, right? So hips are back, and upper body is back, and then you have to kind of reach the arms forward to keep the balance. That's his heels a little bit forward over the ankles, upper body back over the hips and stretch your arms forward and stretch your spine up a little bit higher on the toes, knees up towards the ceiling and change. Come up. Nice job. Okay. The third part, come up a little bit onto your toes. Feel the weight in the balls of your feet. Touch your knees together. Suck your stomach in spine straight position. Sit down as slow as possible, at least a 10 count and all the way down. You're leaning against the wall as you just slide down the wall to your heels. Continuously stretch your spine up towards the ceiling, create a natural human traction, a half inch gap between your hips and your heels. Keep your knees together and forward, thighs parallel to the floor, arms parallel to the legs and your spine perfectly straight 90 degree angle. So from the side, your body looks like a box. And then take a deep breath, knees together and spine straight and slowly come back up the opposite way you went down. Great control, good job, focus everybody. And then feet together, arms down side and relax. All right, second set, right foot steps out to the right, set it up again, six inches between the feet, toes point straight ahead, all three parts. Bring your arms up parallel to the floor, all five fingers together, thumbs touching with the index fingers, elbows locked, shoulders relaxed. Okay, suck the stomach in and then sit the hips into the chair. Feet flat position. This is a great thing to be able to be aware of, feet flat position hips back in the chair. Lift your chest and bend your total spine, backward bending, bring your upper body back. Good. Now you've got the great backward bend, Karen, and weight into the heels. So this is where you slowly pull the stomach in. The more you can make the connection, yes, and lift the chest and bend the spine and make the connection and lock the elbows and relax the shoulders and stretch forward. Lean back, fall back, way back. You're trying to fall down backwards and change. Come up. That was wonderful. Okay, second part. Keep the arms there. Come up onto the toes all the way as high as possible. And then slowly stretch your spine up, right? From the tailbone, to the spine, to the chest, to the head. You're stacking everything. Heels a little bit closer over the ankles, stretch the spine a little bit more. And then sit down on the tops of the toes. Everything I say is just a direction to move in. So you're just finding your way. Great, Monica. And then you slowly sit down, good. Hips and head touching the wall. So stick the hips back and bring the upper body back. Hips and head touching the wall. This is the challenge. Knees up, chest up, a little bit higher on the toes. Never sitting below the chair. This one, you're just sitting on the chair. Inhale, breathing and come back up. Beautiful, good focus, Antonio. Third part, come up a little bit onto the toes and touch your knees together. <clears throat> 
Suck your stomach in, sit down slowly, leaning against the wall. The leaning against the wall means your hips and the head is touching the wall. So it's like the hips are back and the upper body back. It's a challenge in this one, right? And that gives you space to slowly lock the elbows, stretch your shoulders out of the body, stretch your spine up, create a natural human traction. Half inch gap between the hips and the heels and you're building strength for the muscles that we use in toe stand. That's it. And your body looks like a box. Take a deep breath, knees together, spine straight, and slowly come back up the opposite way you went down. Beautiful awkward today, great. Control, focus, breathing, good, take your time. All right, feet together, arms down, side, relax. We do eagle pose next, Gorasana. Identify which is the right arm and the left arm. Don't mix them up. Bring your arms over your head sideways and bring the right arm underneath the left arm. Cross your arms with each other and twist them like ropes. Bring your hands, palms together in front of your face, the thumbs towards your face and the little baby fingers towards the mirror. So right elbow is underneath and whatever elbow is underneath, that hand should go then closer to the, you got it, Alex, yeah, switch the arm, so right arm underneath the left arm, and then bring the right, yeah, right arm underneath the left arm, and then bring the right hand close, yes, perfect, right hand goes closer to the face, you got it, pull the elbows down, suck your stomach in, sit the hips into the chair, upper body leaning back, stay there, and lift the right leg up over the left leg as high as possible, and twist your legs like ropes, and if you can, right foot goes uh, behind the left calf muscle and the toes stick out on the other side. If it's not happening yet, it's okay. You just twist the legs and sit the hips more. Twist the arms and arch the upper body back more. And you're finding a balance between those things. Bring your knees to the right and the upper body to the left to get your feet, knees, elbows, hands, one straight line. If it's possible, very slowly, Aurelia, just the knees go to the right and then bring the torso to the left and see if you can pull everything else in the center. Just at your own pace. Suck your stomach in and sit more. Pull the elbows down more. Upper body back more and change. Come up. That was great. Good. Okay, bring the arms up over the head. And then left arm goes underneath the right arm. Cross your arms each other and twist them like ropes. Bring your hands, palms together in front of the face. Thumbs toward your face, little baby fingers facing away from you. You nailed it, Alex. Pull the elbows down, suck your stomach in. Sit the hips into your chair, upper body leaning back. And then left leg lifts up over the right leg as high as possible and twist your legs like ropes. Left foot behind the right leg under the calf muscle. All five toes visible on the other side. Sit the hips a little bit more, twist the arms and legs a little bit more, arch the upper body back a little bit more, no gap between the ankle and the calf muscle. Bring your knees to the left and the upper body to the right. So you get the feet, knees, elbows, hands to line up in the center. Suck your stomach in and sit more. That's it, Karen. Pull your elbows down more, upper body back more, and change. Come up. That's good. Okay. Bring the arms over the head because we go right into the second set for this one. Right arm goes underneath the left arm. Cross the elbows and the wrists. Nothing at the expense of your breath. Make sure you can breathe. Pull the elbows down, suck your stomach in, sit the hips into the chair, upper body leaning back. And then right leg lifts up over the left leg. I know when we're trying so hard, sometimes we want to get somewhere, but make sure you can breathe through whatever you're doing and then be happy with what you get. Sit the hips a little bit more, twist your arms and legs a little bit more, arch your upper body back a little bit more. And then just to have those levers, right? Very lightly, the knees go to the right side and the torso goes to the left side and you keep twist, you pull everything in the center. Suck your stomach in and sit more, pull the elbows down more and one more upper body back, the chest if you can and change, good. Okay, bring the arms up over the head. Last one, left arm underneath the right arm, cross the elbows and the wrists, bring the hands, palms together in front of the face, thumbs towards your face, baby fingers away from you, that's it. Which one, the right and the left? That's why we said we don't mix them up. The left one, the left one. Pull the elbows down. Unless you did the right one, unless you did the left one in the first, that, then you can switch them up. Stay there, down there, upper body back, left leg lifts up over the right leg. I wouldn't want you to do one side twice and be super uneven. And then twist the legs. That's it, Courtney. And then it just, like, that's what it takes, right? Just how to sit the hips back and arch the upper body back. And you twist the arms and legs and open the joints. This posture is for your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists, your hips, your knees, and your ankles. All right, got again the nice spine, Karen. So I'm going to give you one more time. Gently pull the stomach in. Yes, yeah, sit the hips down, pull the elbows down, upper body back, and change. Woo, good one. Okay, when you're up, arms up over the head. And then relax your arms down by your side. You guys are great with the warm up. Okay, grab some water if you want some more. It's very normal when you start to arch the back and then the belly just hangs out a little bit and then you keep figuring out how to pull those stomach in to support it and you did a great job. <clears throat> okay, balancing series. First one is standing head to knee pose. 90% concentration, 10% physical because you're just finding out where you are in the body 
And then you got to figure out what to shift around. How deep you go every day is different. Shift away to the left leg, wipe your hands, interlock your fingers, grab the right foot, hold the right foot out in front of you three inches below your toes and get a nice grip and don't lose the grip, right? Little bit interlock fingers and hold underneath the ball of your foot. Okay. Now, concentrate on the left knee. Make sure that your left knee is locked to begin with. So your left leg is solid, concrete, lamppost, one piece, unbroken. So it's like you don't even have a standing knee in this posture. And then inhale, breathing slowly, gently. Right leg lifts up and stretches forward until the right leg is exactly parallel to the floor, no higher, no lower, and the left knee locked. That's it, Monica. You just keep lifting that knee up, and that's going to keep building mobility. Yeah, you don't even have to straight the leg. You just lift the knee up, lift the knee up, lift the knee up. Yes, yeah, so you can figure out this. Yes, that's the one. That's it. If you get both knees locked and you can still balance there comfortably, then the elbows down next to the calf muscle. This is where you can figure out the weight distribution, Monica. That's beautiful. Elbows touch the calf muscle and eventually the elbows will go down below the calf muscle and change. Okay, shift the weight over to the right leg. Wipe your hand, interlock the fingers, grab your left foot, hold the left foot out in front of you three inches below the toes. Balancing on one leg, right? For us, it's just like, oh, we're just lifting the leg up. There is so much happening in your body to figure out weight distribution once you pick up that foot off the floor. Interlock the fingers, get a nice tight grip, don't lose the grip. Standing knee locked, knee back, thigh muscle contracted, and the weight distributed evenly all over your foot, equally the same stomach in. Inhale, breathing slowly, gently. Left leg lifts up and stretches forward. Yeah, if you find something weird, Courtney, then, you know, just feel it out today. <laughs> That's it, Karen. I'm always going to say you the same thing. Now, it doesn't have to be fast, but always that body coming forward as the knee going backwards to keep help getting your standing legs straight more and build that connection. If you get both knees locked and you can balance, bend the elbows down. This looks beautiful until the elbows touch the calf muscle. The elbows, eventually they go below the calf muscle and change. Okay, do the backward bend one second. You push the hands on the hips, open it up. <clears throat> So in the second set, Alex, uh, leg up is more important than stretching out. If you start kicking towards the floor, all the pressure is going to go into your lower back. So even if you're holding the foot and you lift the leg way up and then you start to stretch it forward, even if it doesn't get straight, higher is better than straighter down, right? Okay, shift the weight to the left leg. Wipe your hand, interlock the fingers, grab your right foot, hold the right foot out in front. It's a lot of instruction, but even if you're just on step one, yeah, you can even do that. Get the knee to come up higher from the beginning so you can get a nice interlock grip, you get all compressed, and then you can figure out how to shift the weight more even on the foot, right? All you got to do is look on grabbing the foot. That's it. And then inhale, breathing slowly, gently, right leg lifts up and stretches forward. So your goal is to get the right leg exactly parallel to the floor, no higher, no lower, and the left knee left. If you're still working for the grip, just keep doing that. You're doing beautiful because everything that needs to open up will start to open up to build space for you. If you get both knees locked and you can balance comfortably, bend the elbows down next to the calf muscle. If your elbows go down below the calf muscle and you still have a happy smiling face, that's a requirement. Body down, chest down, tuck your chin to the chest, look at your stomach, and put the forehead onto the knee and change. Take your time, Antonio, if you want to finish it. Okay. <clears throat> Shift over into the right leg, wipe your hands, interlock the fingers, grab your left foot, hold the left foot out in front of you, three inches below the toes. Because on your journey for grabbing that foot, if there's something stuck in your way, that's your body letting you know there's something that you need to work on, right? That's why it's never about how deep you go. If you get hit something, it's like, oh, this is why you're here. Standing knee locked, solid concrete, lamppost, one piece, unbroken, there's no knee. Inhale, breathing slowly, gently, left leg lifts up and stretches forward. I say it all the time, this whole class is about learning how to shift pressure around inside your body. Kick the left heel forward, flex the left foot, turn the left foot in from the ankle towards the face. All five toes eventually turn back towards you beyond perpendicular. If you're able to get both knees locked and you can still balance comfortably, then you bend the elbows down next to the calf muscle. If your elbows go down below the calf muscle, you can hold it there. Body down, chest down, tuck your chin into the chest like rabbit, look at the stomach and put the forehead onto the knee. Change. See, that's good. You find your spot and you work your spot. I'm driving the train, you get off at your stop. Okay, push the hips forward one more time, the backward bend. We'll do the standing bow pulling pose, Dande Yamana Danyarasana. Bring your right hand out in front of you, the palm facing up towards the ceiling and your elbow is in touching with the body. Say, mama, give me money. Yeah, you're holding the money in your hand. 
Don't drop the money. Bring your hand out to the right. Don't twist your wrist. Reach back and grab your right foot from the inside and hold at your ankle joint. All five fingers together. The thumb touches with the index finger. That's the one, Alex. Left arm up in front of you, chin close to the shoulder. So shoulder is, then chin is close together and bring your two knees together and then figure out the spine in between. Huh? Shoulder and chin close to each other, knees touching each other and figure out the spine in between. Already the right shoulder is opening up. Inhale, breathing. Charge your body forward and kick the right leg back and up to the ceiling. And bring your body down from the lower spine until, good Karen, abdomen and chest are parallel to the floor. You continuously keep finding your kick in this posture. And then you start to get the foot to go up over the top of the head. Two feet are in one line from the side. Kick back more the right shoulder behind the left shoulder invisible. Simultaneously stretch your left fingertips forward and try to touch the wall in front of you. So you can bring your two shoulders in one line, the right shoulder invisible behind the left shoulder. Kicking and stretching are equal and simultaneous 50-50. The harder you kick, you can balance forever. Bring the body down more and go forward and kick back, kick up, kick harder, kick one more time and change. Whoo, left side. Bring your left hand out in front with the palm facing up and the elbow touching the body. Bring your hand out to the left and then reach back and grab your left ankle from the inside. That's it. all I gotta do is drop that hand back and put the foot into that hand and hold at the ankle joint. Like your heel of the hand touch the heel of the foot. Right arm up, chin close to the shoulder. <clears throat> okay, bring the two knees together and bring the shoulder and chin together. Open the body up in between. Standing knee locked, weight distributed evenly. Inhale, breathing. Charge your body forward and kick your left leg back and up to the ceiling and bring your body down from the lower spine until your abdomen and chest are parallel to the floor. That's it. Now, the more you get the body to come down, the more the arm and head come up. So you can keep creating the backward bend and reach through your right finger, stretch your right shoulder out of the body, kick back so the left shoulder goes behind your right shoulder, invisible, kicking and stretching equal and simultaneous 50-50. Beautiful, Karen. So whatever you release in the upper back area, see if you can just pull the shoulders apart one more time, body down, yes, and go forward. Yes, this is the one. And kick back, kick up, kick harder, and change. Because this is what you're going to do later in triangle, right? When you pull your arms apart and let your upper body twist, you're already starting that process here in standing bows. The same thing. Okay, second set. Bring the right hand out in front, palm face up. Bring your hand out to the right. And then reach back and grab your right foot from the inside and hold at the ankle, right? It takes something to pull the shoulders apart in opposite direction. This one is a backward bend with a little bit of a spine twist. Bring the left arm up in front of you, chin close to the shoulder. Standing knee stays locked throughout the entire posture. And bring the two knees together from the start. Inhale, breathing, charge your body forward and kick the right leg back and up to the ceiling and bring your body down from the lower spine until. Thank you. Now reach through the left finger, stretch the shoulder out of the body, kick back so the right shoulder goes behind the left shoulder invisible. Kicking and stretching are equal and simultaneous 50-50. Body down more and go forward and kick back, kick up, kick harder. Kick one more time and change. Beautiful. Good job. Okay, last side, last set. Left hand out in front, palm face up. Bring your hand out to the left and then reach back and grab the left ankle from the inside. Right arm up, chin close to the shoulder. Okay, go standing knee locked throughout the entire posture. Bring the two knees together from the start. Inhale, breathing, charge your body forward and kick the left leg back and up and bring the body down from the lower spine until abdomen and chest parallel to the floor. That's it. Now take your time, Monica. Don't let the knee bend anymore on the standing leg. The more you can get the body to lift up and the more you can straighten the standing leg over time, right? So take your time there. That's it. Kicking and stretching equal and simultaneous 50-50. That's it. Distribute the weight evenly on the standing foot and pull your shoulders apart and open the chest. This is the one, Karen. Good. Body down. Yes, Aurelia. Body down more and go forward and kick back, kick up, kick harder, kick one more time and chain. Beautiful focus, Courtney. Good. And when you come back up, we don't have to do any more of those. Okay. Next is balancing stick pose to the Dandasana. These postures are 10 second postures. So you just got out of the minute long postures. Um, 
but you know, 10 seconds can feel long in this one. Arms over the head, palms together. To lock the fingers, release the index fingers, thumbs crossed. Stretch your arms up to get your elbows locked and the arms always touching with your ears and the chin away from your chest. Inhale, breathing, right leg steps forward. Lock both of your knees. Go down with your arms and head together. That's it. So your arms, body, head, legs, everything is parallel to the floor. You look like you're a capital letter T, not a broken umbrella. Charge your body forward and stretch your shoulders out of the body and get your chest down and the chin away from your chest and bring your leg up a little bit more. Stretch in opposite directions, natural human tug of war. Stretch and stretch and stretch and change. Come up. Nice job, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Elbows locked and the chin up, upper body back. Inhale, breathing. Left leg step, step forward and lock both of the knees. Come down with your arms and head together. Arms, body, head, legs, everything parallel to the floor. That's it. Bring the leg up and stretch your shoulders out of the body. Charge the body forward and bring the chin away from the chest. Body down, leg up, chest down, leg up, every muscle contraction. That's it, Karen. Go leg up one more time and go forward. Stretch and stretch. Oh, my God. And change. Come up. That's letter T. <laughs> and then arms come down. Yeah, it's a weight. The more you get the body forward, the more you can bring the leg up. It's like a counterbalance, right? That was great. Okay, keep breathing. Second set. Arms over the head, palms together. Interlock the fingers. Release the index fingers. Thumbs crossed. Stretch the arms up to get the elbows locked and the arms of the ears. Inhale, breathing. Right leg steps forward. Lock both of the knees and go down with the arms and head together. It's very normal when you really lock the standing knee that you feel your center body weight chart uh, go backwards. That's okay. And then stretch your shoulders out of the body and stretch forward. But keep working on that standing knee lock. Good. Bring the leg up a little bit more. Point the toes and go forward a little bit more. Stretch the shoulders. Stretch and stretch and change. Come up. Oh, my goodness. Good, Alex. You're not having fun if you don't fall out of that one. Arms over the head, palms together. Stretch up toward the ceiling. Elbows locked, chin away from the chest. Inhale, breathing. Left leg steps forward. Lock both of the knees. Go down with the arms and head together. That's it. Charge your body forward. Stretch your shoulders out of the body. Bring the leg up more. Point the, so you get the chest to move down through the arms and you stretch the shoulders more out of the body and bring the leg up more. Opposite directions. That's it. You got it, Courtney. Stretch and stretch and stretch and change. Come up. Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Great job, everybody. And then when you're up, arms come down. Good job, Monica. All right. Good. When you're up, that's it. You get to put two feet back on the floor. <clears throat> come to the left side of your mat and towel for the... um. Standing separate leg stretching pose, or just make sure you have space that you can take a big step to the right. Okay. Arms over the head sideways, right leg step to the right, uh, big step, four feet distance. At the same time, your arms go down parallel to the floor. That's it. Your two heels should still be on the same line. Two feet are slightly pigeon toed, so you can get the feet to press in the floor and get access to all those leg muscles. Exhale, breathing, tuck your stomach in, bend your body from the lower spine, the chin forward and your knees locked. It's very normal this time, like the inner parts of the legs don't like to connect in this one. So you got to really keep those feet kind of flat into the floor. Don't let them roll to the outside. Grab the heels from the outside, all five fingers together. If you can't grab the heels, you can try the outside of the feet. You're fine right there with the hands on the calves, Monica. That looked good. And then, yeah, yeah, And then bend the elbows like we did in that first posture. Yeah, and then you can get the body in closer to the legs and roll your body weight forward to the toes so you can push the knees back. So you roll more weight forward to the balls of the feet and you lift the hips up and keep the knees back to stretch the legs. And then you pull the body in a little bit closer to the legs and you relax your back muscles and stretch your spine. Good. Your goal one day to get the top of the head on the floor in uh, between the feet or the forehead if you go start with. Good. Chin up, look forward, roll forward, pull harder. Eventually get the whole spine perfectly straight. Did 360 degree angle stretching. This is exactly the way, Monica, you just figure out. When do I roll forward? When do I stretch the spine? When do I roll forward? When do I stretch the spine? The last chance, roll forward and pull harder and try to touch your forehead onto the floor. Inhale, breathing and come back up the opposite way. What a good one. And then when you're up, right leg back to the place. This is how it happens, right? In increment, you come up and get stuck up against something and you figure out how to shift around. And then you do something else and you figure out how to shift around. And the whole body just starts changing, right? Inch by inch, little by little. Okay, second set. Bring the arms up over your head sideways. Right leg steps to the right. Arms come down parallel to the floor. Two heels in one line, two feet slightly pigeon toed. Huh? Only time things get weird is when you start thinking you should be somewhere that you're not yet. Suck your stomach in and bend your body from the lower spine, chin forward and the knees locked. If you're just looking how to increase perception, all you have to do is notice what's happening in your body and look for what's next. And it's never about how far you go. 
Pull the heels, stretching your upper body from the lower spine down towards the floor. Keep both of your knees locked throughout the entire posture and roll your body weight forward like a wheel and try to touch the forehead onto the floor. Don't open the legs anymore, Karen. Otherwise, you're just going to be resting with your head on the floor. I want you stretching. <laughs> knees locked and roll the body weight forward to the toes. Get the body in closer to the legs and release tension in the back. Leg stretching, hip stretching, lower spine stretching, whole spine stretching. Eventually, the whole body is stretching 360 degree angle. Coccyx to the toes and the coccyx to the forehead. The last chance, roll forward and pull harder. And now try to touch the forehead on the floor at the end. Beautiful. Inhale, breathe in, come up the opposite way. If I ever sound like I'm yelling at you, I'm not yelling at you. I'm just excited. Right leg back to the place. <laughs> and arms relax down. <laughs> Okay, triangle poses next trigonasana. Bring your arms up over the head sideways. Right leg steps to the right, a big step four feet distance. Immediately the arms come down parallel to the floor. Your palms face down to the floor. Turn your right foot out to the right. Turn it half inch more all the way. Make sure that the right foot is parallel to the wall in front of you and the two heels are still on the same line. That's it, inhale breathing, bend your right knee and sit down. That's it. Body over the hips and bounce a couple of times to help you sit down lower. Your right thigh bicep parallel to the floor. So the right leg is like an upside down letter L. If you're not there yet, you're on the way. And then stay down there or the hips don't come up. Bring the hips forward, arms back, body back, open the chest. Inhale, breathe and move both of your arms. Hips stay down, body stays up. Reach the right fingertips to the big and the second toe, but don't touch the floor. There's no pressure against the floor with the fingers. Good, Courtney. Yeah, just take your time figuring it out. Stretch your left arm up, reach through the fingers, open the shoulders, right? And stretch your right arm down so you can feel the two shoulders opening in opposite directions. Push your left hip forward, push your right knee back with the help of the elbow. And now twist the chest, the upper body back a little bit more Aurelia so you can straighten the head out, chin to the shoulder. That's it, just like spine twist. Keep the left knee locked and the left foot flat on the floor. Inhale, breathe in, come back up the opposite way. That was amazing, good. Come back up, turn the right foot into the center, turn the left foot out to the side. Yeah, just the upper body that twists so you're not putting too much on the head and the neck. Okay. Inhale, breathing, bend the left knee and sit down until your left thigh, the femur bone is parallel to the floor. And then once you're down there, stay down there. So as much as you can, you keep the hips down, Alex. Inhale, breathing, move the arms. I know in some other time, it's like you feel like the hips will go up. When, yeah, now stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up, 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 up. Body up, body up, body up, body up. Nope, hips down. Body up, body up, body up. Your chest up, chest up, chest up, whole body up. Up, 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 yes, that, whole body up, and then sit down, and then whole body up, and then sit down, and then whole body up, and then sit down, and open your shoulders in opposite directions. You got to have room to stretch those arms. Push the right hip forward, push the left knee back, upper body turn or twist back like spine twisting posture. Keep the right knee locked and the right foot flat on the floor and change. Come up. That's it, Aurelia. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Just figure out that spine twist. Left foot in, arms over the head, sit back to the place, relax your arms down by the side. Remember I said in standing bow, you're pulling the shoulders apart and it opens the chest. In triangle pose, you're pulling the shoulders apart and it opens the chest. Okay. Second one, bring the arms up over the head sideways, right leg steps to the right, big step, arms come down parallel to the floor. <clears throat> Turn the right foot out to the right. Inhale, breathing, bend your right knee and sit down. It just over time, you're figuring out what to pull apart to keep the hips sitting down and the chest opening up, right? So you can't do one side too hard, right? This is where you use every muscle, every organ in the body, every major gland at the same time. Inhale, breathe and move both of your arms. So just move the arms, but the hips stay down. It's very normal when the arms move, it's like your hips wanna go whoop and sink up in the air. No, hips stay down, sit down and then stretch up. So this time focus that reach, stretch through your left arm and open the shoulder. That's it, Courtney. Open the shoulder, open the shoulder. Now reach your right hand, Alex, towards your toes, just in the direction of your toes. Not, not down more, just in the direction of your toes because you're looking at like, yeah, like that. And then sit the hips down more and stretch your arm up more. Good, open the shoulders, push the left hip forward. Push the right knee back, upper body twist back. Keep the left knee locked and the left foot flat on the floor. Inhale, breathing, and come back up the opposite way. Looking good, good. Right foot turns to the center, left foot out to the side. Those three levers, push your hip forward, push your knee back, upward body twist back. You can start those at any time in the posture, it will help. Inhale, breathing, bend your left knee and sit down. Even like when you're coming down here, right? It's like we say, right hip down and forward, the left knee back, two knees in one line, arms back, body back, open the chest. All of those things are connected. Inhale, breathing, move both of the arms. That's it, Monica. Chest stays up. Don't lean down just to touch the toes. I want your body to stay up and you have to stretch for those toes out of your shoulder. 
That's it, Karen. Now push the right hip forward, push the left knee back with the elbow, twist the upper body back. Now one more time, Karen, find that strength in the standing leg. Keep your right knee locked, the right foot flat on the floor, twist back, good. And then inhale, breathing, yes! And come back up the opposite way. Good, you got it at the end. Okay, turn the left foot into the center and then arms over the head, step back to the place, relax your arms down by your side. Looking good. Everybody working good today, okay. Next is the standing zebra leg head to knee pose, Dandiyamana Janya Shirasana. Bring your arms over the head sideways, palms together, cross only your thumbs. Stretch your arms up to get the elbows locked and the arms with the ears. Right leg steps to the right, uh, three feet distance, 36 inches. And then turn and face the right side and turn your hips. One, two, three, four, five times to get the uh, two hips in one line from the side, the two heels in one line, and the backside foot 45 degree angle. Exhale, breathing, and you go down with the arms and head together. Tuck your chin to the chest, look at your stomach, put the forehead onto your knee. If you can't get the forehead to touch your knee, bend your knee a little bit. The forehead is touching the knee. So what you do, the forehead not touching the knee. Stretch your hands forward beyond your toes, your elbows straight, and use your hands against the floor to help get your right leg straight. And that will give you space to suck your stomach in and tuck your chin in and get the head in closer with the stomach. That's it. Maximum body weight, the front side leg to get the right side hip to stick up more towards the ceiling and bring the two hips in one line from the side. All right, Antonio, push the floor. Try to lock your right knee quick couple of times. Yes. Inhale, breathe and come back up, arms and head together. Okay, stop in the middle, turn face to the left side and turn your hips 180 degree angle until, until, until you get the two hips in one line from the side. The feet pressed nice and even into the floor. The backside foot is turned in. Exhale, breathing, and you go down, arms and head together. You got it, Alex. Good alignment with the hips. Tuck your chin to the chest. Look at your stomach. Put the forehead onto the knee. If your forehead doesn't touch the knee, no problem. Bend your knee up a little bit. And then elbows straight. Stretch your hands forward beyond the toes to help get your left knee locked. Suck your stomach in and tuck the chin to your chest and get the head in closer with the stomach. That's it. More that you might feel the hips shift backwards, right? Your right heel is down on the floor, your right foot is flat, and your right knee is locked, and then you get the left leg straight more. Suck the stomach in, get the head in. Maximum body weight, the front side leg. Left side hip sticks more up to the ceiling to get the two hips in one line from the side. Push the floor with your fingers, try to lock your left knee. Inhale, breathing, come back up, arms and head together. Okay, stop in the middle, right leg back to the place, relax your arms down by your side. Whew. A lot happening in that posture. But again, just figure out something you can shift around. Second one, bring the arms up over the head, palms together, cross the thumbs. Stretch up to get the elbows locked and the arms always with the ears. Right leg steps to the right, three feet distance, 36 inches. And then turn to the right and turn the hips again. Until your two hips are exactly in one line from the side, let that back foot turn in even more, Monica, so you can get the two hips to line up. Yeah, you can turn it in even more. Yeah, this is much better. And then go down front side. Exhale, breathing, and go down with the arms and head together. That's it. Tuck your chin to the chest, look at your stomach, forehead on the knee, forehead doesn't touch the knee, bend your knee a little bit, and then use your hands against the floor, elbows straight. So it's rabbit pose spine in this posture and balancing stick arms. The elbows are straight and the arms are stretching like balancing stick, and you suck the stomach in and get the chin into the chest and bring the head in closer with the stomach to create a rabbit pose spine. Maximum body weight, the front side leg. Good, Karen, to get the right side hip to stick up toward the ceiling and bring the two hips in one line from the side and then push against the floor, arms straight more. Try to lock your right knee quick couple of times. Inhale, breathe and come back up, arms and head together. Great with the hips at the end, that was great. Okay, good. When you come back up, stop in the middle and then turn to the side one more time and turn the hips five times more until you can get the two hips exactly in one line from the side. As it, just make sure your feet don't cross over, then it's like impossible. Just the two heels in one line, but not, not crisscross. That's it, Monica. Now you can really turn the hips. Exhale, breathe, and go down, arms and head together. Tuck your chin to the chest. Look at your stomach with the forehead on the knee. Forehead doesn't touch the knee. Congratulations, you're human. Bend the knee up a little bit and stretch the hands forward, elbows straight to help get the knee locked. Yeah. More you get the arms straight and more you get the left leg straight, then you have more room to suck your stomach in and create flexion in your spine. That's it. It's like you wanted to get the head up into the stomach. That's it. Like you wanted to get the head up to the ceiling 
and then you keep stretching out of the shoulders. Maximum body weight, the front side leg, left side hip sticks up to the ceiling to get the two hips in one line from the side, push the floor with the fingers and try to lock your left knee. Inhale, breathe in, come back up, arms and head together. I think I was saying left on the other side. Okay, turn to the center and then step back to the place and relax your arms down. Beautiful sets, everybody. Okay, a couple more, then we get to lie down. Tree pose, pick up the right foot. Hold your right foot from underneath with the left hand. Bring your right leg up as high as possible. Your heel touches the costume. The sole of the foot faces the ceiling and let the right knee come down. Push your hips a little bit forward and gently push your right knee back. You're trying to get your two knees in one line from the side and the hips forward opening up the hips and pelvis. And the same principle like triangle pose, the upper body back, two hips in one line, two shoulders in one line, spine straight in the center. Bring your right hand up to the center of the chest. Now, not a requirement, but if the foot can stay on the thigh high, left hand comes up to meet at palms together, namaskar. If the foot slips at all, you keep holding the foot with the hand. Your standing knee is locked, stomach in and spine straight. Change, right leg down. Okay, left side, pick up the left foot, hold from underneath. Even if you have to lift the knee up really high straight to start with Alex, your goal is to get the heel to come all the way up to like, if you were wearing like a bikini, it would be like your heel was at the bikini line. Yeah, yeah, like that. And then even if the knee's way up and you feel a little bit off, just like I always say, hang out there and figure out if you can release something and shift something around, slowly stretch your spine, let the hip release. The goal is to get that foot to start high and then everything else can open up. You just can't judge it. Yeah, that's it. Gently push the hips forward and push the left knee back, upper body back to hips in one line, to shoulders in one line, and you always slowly stretch the spine. Left hand comes to the center of the chest. Good, Aurelia. If you can balance, right hand comes to meet it, but more important is the traction. Lift the chest and slowly stretch the spine, distribute the weight even on the foot, and pull the stomach in. Nice, Courtney. And change, left leg down. Okay, toe stand next is Paragustasana. <clears throat> if you're still working on the tree, you can do tree again. Otherwise, try the toe stand, pick up the right foot, put it on the middle of the thigh. This time, go as high as you feel comfortable. It has to be somewhere above the knee and your foot has to stay on the thigh. It doesn't slide off. And then bring your hands to the center of the chest and bend your body from the lower spine towards the floor. If you can get your hands, 10 fingers to touch the floor, then slowly bend the knee and sit the hips down onto the heel. And then walk the hands to the outside of the body. Just remember, Monica, always going forward in this one. Don't sit backwards. Yep. And if you can't get to the floor today, that's no problem. And don't push too hard. But always you got to go forward in this posture. This one is not like sitting down in the chair. If you get the hands on the floor, then you can sit the hips down. Walk the hands back to the outside of the body and then slowly Stretch your spine up towards the ceiling, natural human traction, balancing on the fingertips with two knees in one line from the side. This is where a third part of awkward helped you create a half inch gap between your hips and your heels. Slowly stretch the spine, stomach in, and change. Hands come back to the floor, come back up the opposite way. Great job, everybody. Finding your spot and working your spot. When you're up, right leg down. If you can pass through tree on the way out, great. If you need to get your foot off, that's fine too. Left side, pick up the left foot, put on the middle of the thigh as high as you feel comfortable. Bring the hands together in the center of the chest. Bend your body from the lower spine down towards the floor. If you can put your hands, 10 fingers on the floor in front of you, slowly bend your knee and sit your hips down onto your heel. And then walk your hands back to the outside of the body. Never pain in the knees. If there's pain, we don't do that. A little bit uncomfortable, we figure out how to shift things around. Okay, so you dip down on the heel, walk the hands to the outside of the body. So whether you're doing the tree or the toe stand, they're both stretching and balancing poses. So you learn how to stretch your spine and balance. Left hand up to the center of the chest. If you can balance, bring the right hand to meet it, palms together, namaskar. Slowly stretch the spine, stomach in. Eyes looking one spot, hold it there. Yeah, you got it, Monica. You don't have to do the hand. You keep working on what you're working. And change, slowly come up the opposite way. If you want to feel it out for a second, Courtney, go for it. <laughs> I know it took you so much to get down there. Beautiful. And then when you're all the way back up, left leg come down and then turn around and lie down, relax on your back, Savasana. You may have to adjust the camera a little bit to see your mat. You have a sip of water if you want. Curse me out in your head, whatever makes you feel comfortable, and then lie down, relax. 
So good standing series. Standing series is the warm up portion, right? So it's like we're figuring out how to fiddle things around, pull on strings, loosen things up. You know what I mean? So then when we get to these floor series, we got some of our normal chronic tension and weirdness out of the way, and we have more space to access things in these uh, more healing postures that we do on the floor. I was just gonna stay here, and if you lie down, I think you're gonna disappear, but that's perfect. <laughs> All right, you got it. Let yourself release tension here. The feet together, arms by your side, palms face up towards the ceiling, head straight position and eyes open. Totally relaxed, completely relaxed. And just allow your circulation to go back to normal with the help of the breath. Your body brings blood, oxygen, nutrition back to your muscles and internal organs. Huge part of the healing process of this class. Especially if you're in a competitive sort of mind, the posture can seem like the most important thing. And really the postures are just tools that we go to work on with our body, right? So it's like, it really makes no difference how deep you go. These postures are designed so that as you move into them, you will come up against whatever it is that you need. And that could be at 1% depth or 99% depth. That's why we say, whether you do 1% or 99%, you get 100% benefit when you try the right way and you don't give up. This is not something that we say to you to make you feel better because you're not doing enough. This is literally how the class works when you learn how to perceive what's happening in your body as you try to do something that you're not able to do. And then you figure out how to shift pressure around inside your body to continue on with your balancing out your strength and flexibility and alignment and mental state. And everything starts to come together, right? That is yoga. Yoga itself is not a practice, right? Yoga is union. Yoga means that you align your physical, your mental, and your energetic body together, and you experience that state of feeling blissful, right? And these are practices to help you achieve yoga, right? So it's never about how deep you go, what the posture looked like, did I get my forehead onto the floor? You know, it's not that. It's how well you align with yourself and everything else in existence, this yoga. The wind removing pose is next Pavan Muktasana. Bend your right leg up and grab your right leg and interlock your fingers a couple of inches below your right knee. Pull your right knee down towards your right shoulder all the way completely avoiding the rib cage. Your left leg is straight and the calf muscle is touching the floor. The calf muscle is not touching, flex the left foot. That's beautiful, Monica. So you got the knee all the way up there and your leg bent and then you straight the leg, but you didn't let that knee come back up. That's the beautiful one. Bring the elbows in close to the body and relax your shoulders. Tuck your chin down to the chest to get the back of your neck flat on the floor. Eyes open, breathing normal, freeze there. You have to learn how to pull down a little bit extra hard while you're relaxing the other things. That's it, maximum compression in the lower abdomen and change, right? Leg down, arms down. Okay, left leg up, grab your left leg. Interlock your fingers a couple of inches below the left knee. So you pull your left knee up and down all the way to your left shoulder, completely avoiding the rib cage. Huh? See what you can do to get the knee to touch the shoulder. That's it, Karen. That's it, Alex. Don't have to worry about anything else. Just the knee is slowly moving to the shoulder. And then you figure out your adjustments. Yeah, bring the elbows in to relax the shoulders and tuck the chin to get the neck and upper back to flatten out and flex the left, uh, flex the right foot to keep it connected. That's it. And learn how to pull down a little bit extra hard and hold there. Beautiful. And change. Left leg down, arms down, immediately both legs up. A little bit of relaxation goes a long way for letting things move. Grab your elbows each other over both of your legs. So each hand on each opposite elbow, a couple of inches below your knees if it's possible and get a nice grip compact. Now, if you can't get the elbows, you go for the elbows, and then you just get the best grip that you can get. Maybe the wrist, maybe the forearms, but you just do it yeah. Now make the legs compact and let the hips open up and lower back come down. Relax your shoulders and tuck your chin down to the chest to get the back of the neck and the upper back to flatten out on the floor. That's it, eyes open, breathing normal. So one day when you improve your skeletal system and all of your bone joints enough, then only you get the entire spine to go flat on the floor. Change, legs down, arms down. Heels together, feet fall open, arms by your side with the palms facing up toward the ceiling, head straight position, eyes always open, and then totally relax, completely relax. Allow your circulation to go back to normal with the help of your breath. This is Savasana, dead body pose. <clears throat> Okie dokie. Second set, bring the right leg up, interlock the fingers a couple of inches below the right knee, pull the right knee down towards the right shoulder. 
all the way. If you can't get the knee down to the shoulder, you bring it a little bit more out to the right and you pull down to the deltoid. Flex the left foot if you have to, to straighten the left leg. Tuck your chin to the chest to get the neck flat. Bring the elbows in closer to the body, even the left one, and see if you can relax your shoulders, even the left one. So if that left shoulder came up off the floor, you get it to come down a little bit more and even it out. And then pull down a little bit extra hard, maximum compression in your lower abdomen. Beautiful, Alex, and change. Right leg down. Left leg up, grab your left leg, interlock the fingers, a couple of inches below the left knee, pull the left knee down to the left shoulder, all the way avoiding the rib cage, and then you figure out your levers. Flex the right foot if you have to, tuck your chin down to get the neck flat, relax your shoulders and bring the elbows in closer to the body, eyes open, breathing normal, everything is finding its way, you have to learn how to pull down a little bit extra hard with the grip and relax the shoulders change. Left leg down, arms down. Immediately both legs up, grab the elbows each other, a couple of inches below the knees if you can. Nice grip and then make the legs compact. So more you can kind of get the legs together and the knees together and the feet can relax. You let the hips come down and the tailbone come down. More you can relax your shoulders and tuck the chin down to get the neck and the upper back flat, right? So you're learning how to flatten the whole spine out on the floor as you shift. That's it. And you're creating good compression for the um, change. Legs down, arms down. Large intestine. The words couldn't find my brain. Okay. Feet together, arms by the side, palms face up, head straight position. Relax, relax, relax. So let yourself release tension. Allow your circulation to come back to normal. Body is resting. <clears throat> Okay, if you ever have like back pain, like you have an injury, you can always skip the sit up and roll over on your stomach. If you're doing the sit up, flex your feet, bring your arms over the head, arms and head stay together. And then inhale breathing and quickly sit up and grab your toes and then bend your elbows to the floor, exhale, touch your forehead on the knees. Nice job. Okay, let's do the cobra pose. Turn around, lie down on your stomach, Bring your chin forward on the floor and set your hand up underneath the shoulders. Your fingertips line up with the tops of your shoulders and the baby fingers line up with your deltoids. And then you just shift all the weight even so it presses on your palms and heels together, legs tight, hips contraction. So you have a solid concrete one piece hip. You get the elbows to come in and your shoulders to relax down and tighten the hips. And inhale breathing, lift your upper body up using 100% back strength. That's it, you just keep lifting up. Come up halfway only, only your belly button is touching the floor. The rest of your upper body is in the air. From the side, your elbow should look like an L, 90 degree angle like a rectangle. Now stretch your elbows down to the hips and bring your elbows into the body to keep the shoulders down and recommit the tension in those hips. Tighten the hips and get those hips muscles solid contraction. And then look up and lift your chest. Back is supposed to hurt. Hold it there and freeze and change, come down. Arms by the side, left ear down, look to the right, breathe and relax, let it go. That's it. <clears throat> so always you're just figuring out how to lift that body up higher. And then always you can let the palms keep pressing more into the floor and bring the elbows in, right? And tighten the hips. So you keep connecting the spine. This is a spine strengthening exercise. Second one, bring the chin forward, hands underneath the shoulders. Not too high up or down, not too far in or out. Not turned in, not turned out. Square your hands underneath the shoulders, fingertips in line with the tops of the shoulders. So you're gonna slide the hands down a little bit more towards the hips if you can, Alex. That's it. So if I was looking down from the ceiling, I couldn't see your fingertips because they're in line with your shoulders. Okay, distribute the weight evenly on the palms, tighten the hips. And then inhale, breathing, lift the upper body up using the back strength. That's it. Now, see if you can even out the hips, Aurelia, lock the knees and get the heels to come back together. It's gonna maybe feel like your body wants to lower down when the spine connects. Elbows in and shoulders down, this is compression. Good, let the weight distribute it evenly on the palms. And then coming up towards the end, everybody look up one more time and lift your chest. Find your edge and hold it there and change, come down. That was a good one, yeah. Arms by the side, right ear down, look to the left. Huh? <clears throat> so it's like that. In these postures, right, it's like something always wants to like 
pop out or move around and then like we just keep like looking for what there is you know what i mean like so you more you build body awareness you just kind of notice what happens when you pull on one side of the body the other thing and you start to even it out in between locust pose salavasana arms straight position bring the arms underneath the body palms down on the floor elbows go underneath your stomach so the palms face down like you're going to hit a volleyball on the floor arms are straight elbows underneath the stomach yeah so straighten the arms out alex and the palms uh towards your feet and then turn the palms down to the floor. And now see if you can, yep, exactly that. Now see if you can bring the arms underneath your body. So that it's gonna feel really uncomfortable on the elbows, but arms straight, palms down. See if you can get the elbows straight. That's what we're going for. Arms straight position with the elbows underneath the body. Beautiful. This will help open the shoulders. This will help the elbow and the wrist. This will help you release pressure in the upper back, but you gotta go for arms straight. Grab the floor, bring the chin forward, relax your left leg. You can even if possible, Aurelia, turn the elbows in just a little bit more. You gotta straighten the arms. Yeah, yeah, this is good. Relax the left, beautiful, oh my gosh. Inhale, breathing, slowly, gently lift the right leg up. I don't care how deep you go, but those straight arms are like integral. Yeah, bring the leg up a little bit higher, and then use that grip to keep opening up the upper back. Lock the knee, point the toes. Good, bring the right leg up a little bit higher at the end and change right leg down. Yeah, so gotta get the arms straight. You guys are wonderful. Relax the right leg, left leg solid, concrete pointed toes. Inhale, breathing slowly, gently lift the left leg up off the floor. I don't even care if you get the leg to lift up if the arms aren't straight. You gotta go for arms straight. Elbows straight, wrists straight shoulder opens up upper back can shift that's the magic in this posture and then you bring your leg up a little bit higher and chain left leg down i know i know this is the one and then all the blood gets to come back in right turn the head in put the mouth down on the towel readjust the hands elbows in a little bit closer together underneath the body if possible on this part just make sure your head stays down on the floor and then see what you can do take a deep breath without bending your knees both legs lift up off the floor as you lift up and come up, go up and come up. Doesn't have to be high, just as high as you can. And then lock the knees and feet together. Find the hips contraction one more time. Take a deep breath and go up one more time and change, come down. Beautiful. Arms up from underneath the body, left ear down, look to the right, breathe and relax. And the reason this is so uncomfortable is because we go through life with bent wrists and bent elbows and rounded back and bent shoulders. So it takes so much to start to straighten them out and shift in the upper back. But that's the magic in this posture. Healing happens in the setup and then you build stamina on top of the healing. It doesn't matter how deep you go, you gotta go for arms straight is the magic. Second set, arms straight position and then bring the arms underneath the body, palms down on the floor. I got people that got their arms out straight that don't even have them underneath the body yet. <clears throat> Interesting question. Let me see your arms out wider, Aurelia. No, no, when you lie down on the floor. And then just slowly press the elbows and let the shoulders do whatever they need to do. Let the upper back do whatever they need to do. The shoulders have a lot more range of motion and opening to allow things to happen. Sometimes people like force the elbows and do stuff. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, now bring the arms underneath the body. Let's see what you can do. Okay. I, and I would say the same thing, just like in half moon, even if the arms aren't straight, just don't forget about it. Anytime you find space, use that space. Inhale, breathing slowly, gently, right leg lifts up off the floor. They already look better than the first set, right? You have to come up against that place that's uncomfortable, even if you're like, oh my God. <laughs> okay, then bring the leg up a little bit higher, point through the right toes, lock the right knee and grab the floor more. What are you talking about? They don't get straight. Look at that. And change, right leg down. I know there's a little bit left, but you're talking about the elbows, the way they push into each other. Okay, relax the right leg, left leg solid, pointed toe. I've seen this before in worst cases. Yours is pretty good. Inhale, breathing, left leg lifts up off the floor. Oh my goodness. This is actually gonna be your posture. This is the one that's gonna help the elbows and the arms. Let the upper back shift so you can get the neck flatter. Bring the leg up higher and lock the knee and point the toes. Everything opens up in between and chains left leg down. Beautiful. Turn your head in, put your mouth down on the towel. Readjust the hands, if possible, elbows in closer and straighter. If not, leave them right there. Yeah, you, this is so nice. Just hold on what you got and relax everything else. All right, now take a deep breath. Without bending the knees, both legs lift up off the floor. Oh my gosh, this is so good. That's all you have to do is keep tightening the hips and locking the knees and stretching the feet and keep grabbing the floor and letting the upper back open up. Lock the knees, feet together, don't give up and take a deep breath, go up one more time and change come down.
arms out from underneath the body. Wow. See, I know. And then they're exhausted and it sucks, but <laughs> just let it go. <laughs> but that's literally the process. It's probably even more important for you, right? Like, and even if you can't, right? If you can't, you physically can't, don't ever say to yourself, I can't. <laughs> You know, because we have no idea what's possible when we just make a little bit of effort. Even if you never get there, you're moving the direction. Okay, let's do the full locus pose, Purna Salabhasana. Bring the chin forward, arms out to the side like airplane wings. My teacher used to say the hardest part of letting go of being right is when you're actually being right. So even if your body can't, you don't think I can't. Okay, chin forward, neck flat, palms down on the floor, feet together, legs tight, hips contraction. Look up toward the ceiling, take a deep breath, arms, body, head, legs, everything lift up off the floor like a 747 taking off. That's it, you lift everything up and then see what it feel. Yeah, beautiful. Now, bring the body up a little bit higher and get the hips lined up and lock the knees and bring the feet together. Arms up, arms and head back, fingertips same level as the head, and then lift your chest up a little bit more. Look up towards the ceiling, exhale, breathing, come up one more time and change, come down. Great job, everybody, good progression. Arms by the side, left ear down, look to the right, breathe and relax. We were doing conversation when they said that, right? Uh, the hardest time to give up being right is when you're actually right. We use that for arguments, right? Because I love to argue. And, uh, but, even if my point is right, if you take the stance of being right, the conversation usually doesn't go well. Second set, bring the chin forward, arms out to the side like airplane wings, palms down on the floor. Feet together, legs tight, hips contraction. You have solid concrete one piece hips. Look up toward the ceiling, take a deep breath. Arms, body, head, legs, everything lift up off the floor. And then you just figure it out, right? To get the legs to come up higher and the body to come up higher. And then just check in. Even if you already feel like your knees are locked, lock the knees, connect the hips, feet together, and then lift the chest up, look up. Exhale, breathing, lift up one more time and change, come down. Good connection, Courtney. Arms by the side, right ear down, look to the left. This is a spine strengthening series. I love it. And then you pay more attention to how well your spine connects and less attention to how high you go and beautiful things start to happen. I'm not like huge into astrology, but my mom is, so she talks to me about it. My birthday, they have like this book that pegs your day. Like, so my birthday, the specific day is the day of the winner. I always want to win. It's just like in my competitive nature. Okay, bring the chin forward, hold the feet from the outside for bow pose. The thumb still touch with the index finger. Yes, yeah, so if you can grab your feet behind you, Alex, hold from the outside this time, not like we did in the standing one. Yeah. Oh yeah, you got it. And now see if you can slide the hands up a little bit so you're grabbing just underneath the toes this time instead of the ankles. Good. Knees in, wrist straight, pointed toes. Take a deep breath and slowly kick your legs up towards the ceiling. And then look up and kick them. That's it. Yeah, you don't have to do any pulling of the arms. You just drive the feet into the hands. Look up and kick up. So you're using 100% of your strength to create a backward bend against gravity. Knees in, wrist straight, Pointed toes. One more time, lift your head up, everybody, and then keep kicking and change. Wow, come down. Everybody good at the end. Okay, arms by the side, left ear down, look to the right. So it was just like a little bit more. And so because my brain always wants to win, and that was true, I read that. I was like, damn, they're right. I always want to win. I had to change what winning means to me. So before winning an argument, win, winning an argument, right? So that's how I always did. I fight until people lose. But now I changed it so... Winning to me means both people leave the conversation heard and respected, even if I don't get to win the argument. Second set, bring the chin forward, hold the feet from the outside. <clears throat> knees in, wrist straight, pointed toes. So there's six inches between your knees and the toes. Arms and legs look like two wheels in one base. Take a deep breath and slowly kick your legs up and look up and kick up. You don't have to do anything too hard. If you get stuck against something, be intelligent. What can you shift around so you can keep working? Look up and kick up. Knees in, wrist straight, pointed toes. Lift the head up. One more time, keep kicking. And change, come down, beautiful. Arms and legs relax, right ear down, look to the left, let it go. Because he's like, I recognize that part of me, that need to win is never gonna go away. That's just ingrained, hardwired into me. But I can choose what winning is to me. I can choose what game that I'm playing, right? And when you do that stuff, right? So sometimes we like 
find these things about ourselves that we like we don't like everything about you is wonderful and beautiful you just have to figure out how to use it to create the life it is that you want to have okay bring your hands underneath the shoulders push up to the top of the towel for fixed firm pose shift of adrasana walk the knees forward one by one sit down kneel down position knees and feet together separate your feet and slide your hips down in between the heels so your hips sit down onto the floor yeah if you can come to the front of the towel uh, the mat if you can alex because if you're able to go into this one we're going to go backwards yeah sit down on the floor in between your feet the heels stay touching the sides of your hips so there's no gap there but you sit on the floor bring your hands to the toes thumbs inside fingers outside and then first your right elbow goes down and your left elbow goes down one by one if you can you put the elbows on the floor and then your head touches the floor yeah yeah there you go if you can, head touch the floor, back of the head touch the floor, shoulders touch the floor, and the whole upper body relax on the floor. Yeah, that's where you are, that's where you are. If you're all the way down, bring the arms over the head, grab your elbows each other, pull your elbows down to the floor, tuck your chin to the chest to get the back of your neck to touch the floor, and chest and stomach lift up toward the ceiling. You create a perfect human bridge. Eventually, or in the future, you bring your knees together so they touch each other, but don't let the knees come up off the floor. Bring your hands back to the feet, come up with the help of the elbows. And then when you're up, turn around, lie down, relax on your back, Savasana. You got it. This one good for ankles, knees, and hips. And now all that blood gets to rush back in when you scrape the legs. Just like a sponge, right? We squeeze out all the old junk that's left over, that gets stuck, that maybe gets missed by with our regular circulation. We cut off it, we build up our blood pressure, and then we flush fresh oxygenated blood back into the areas. Big part of the healing process in this class is Compression, relaxation, compression, relaxation. Flex your feet, arms over the head, cross your thumbs, inhale, breathing. Sit up, grab your toes, exhale, double jerk, forehead to the knees, elbows to the floor. Sit down, kneel down, position at the top of your mat and towel. Separate your feet and slide your hips down in between the heels. Your hips touch the floor, your heels touch the hips. The heels stay touching with the hips the whole time. If you have pain in the knees or the feet, you open the knees wider. Bring your hands to the toes, thumbs inside, fingers outside. First, your right elbow down, left elbow down, one by one. Head touch the floor, back of that touch the floor, shoulders touch the floor, and whole upper body relax. Bring your arms over the head, grab your elbows. Pull the elbows down to the floor, tuck your chin to the chest to get the back of the neck to touch the floor. Chest and stomach lift up towards the ceiling. Perfect human bridge. And then knees a little bit closer together. You might feel stretching on the tops of the thighs and the hip flexors. Just make sure the knees don't come up. Bring your hands back to the feet. Come up with the help of the elbows. The hips get lower every time I see you, Karen. And then turn around, lie down, relax on your back, Savasana. You just try the yoga is experimentation, right? Not nothing too hard. You're just figuring out, did that work? Nope. Did that work? Nope. Did that work? Yep. Cool. You know, <laughs> flex your feet, arms over the head, cross your thumbs, inhale, breathing, sit up, grab your toes, exhale, double jerk, forehead to the knees, elbows to the floor. So my job is basically just to be like, try this, try this, try this. If it doesn't work, throw it away. If it doesn't work, keep it. It's gold. Okay. Let's do a sit down, kneel down position at the back of the mat and towel for half tortoise pose, Ardha Tops of the feet down on the floor, no gap underneath the ankles. Hips sit down onto the heels. Bring your arms over the head, palms together, cross your thumbs only. Stretch your arms up to get the elbows locked and the arms of the ears and your chin away from your chest. The hips stay touching the heels throughout the posture. Suck your stomach in and go down with your arms and head together. That's it. The forehead touch the floor. Little baby fingers are touching the floor. The rest of the arms are in the air with the elbows locked. Stretch your arms forward so the shoulder blade scapula is coming out of the body and get the chest down more and the chin away from the chest. That's it. Now, see, you can drop your head just a little bit, Karen, and then lock the elbows and stretch the shoulders out of the body and bring your chest down more. And that might cause your head to come back up a little bit. So we're just gonna lengthen along the sides of the chest and the rib cage. This is just like balancing stick pose. Stretch more forward, chin forward. Your heels stay touching with the hips. Inhale, breathing, gently come back up, arms and head together. And then when you're up, arms come down, turn around, lie down, relax on your back, Savasana. Your, your house always remind me almost like of a TV show, Courtney, like where somebody will be in their house and like a, a neighbor comes and like talks to people through the window, you know what I mean? <laughs> Flex your feet, arms over the head, cross the thumbs, inhale, breathing, sit up, grab the toes, exhale, double jerk, forehead to the knees, elbows to the floor. Half tortoise pose, second set. Sit down, kneel down position, tops of the feet down on the floor, hips stay down on the heels, no gap underneath the ankles. Bring your arms over the head, palms together, cross the thumbs. 
Just stretch your arms up to release the shoulders. Keep the hips down on the heels. Suck your stomach in. Go down with the hips on the heels, body on the legs, forehead on the floor, little baby fingers touch the floor, and then lock your elbows and stretch out of your shoulders. More you can get the elbows straight, more you can stretch out of the shoulders. More the elbows bend, more you're going to get tension in the neck and the shoulders. So you got to go for elbows locked so you can stretch the shoulders out of your body. That's it. Yeah. And you just slowly find it. I love this. Or really same thing. Arms not straight yet. You don't have to force it, but don't forget about it. Elbows a little bit straight more stretch out of the shoulders, more chest down elbows, a little bit straight more stretch out of the shoulders, more chest down. Good. Chin forward. Heels stay touching with the hips. Inhale, breathing, gently come back up, arms and head together. What a beautiful one. Okay. Nice. This is a Monica. Oh my gosh. When you come back up and the arms come down, turn around, lie down, relax on your back, Savasana. Oh my, and then let it go. <clears throat> okay, sad news, last backward bend of the series. Flex your feet, arms over the head, cross your thumbs, inhale, breathing, sit up, grab your toes, exhale, double jerk, foot to the knees, elbows to the floor, camel pose, Ustrasana. Come up on the towel, stand up on your knees, put six inches inside of your legs. So stand up on the knees, six inches inside between your knees and your feet. Bring your hands to the hips so the fingers point down to the floor and your thumbs are on the outside. And then take a deep breath and push your hips forward. Drop your head back as far as it will go. And lean back halfway and stop in the middle. First, the right hand down, grab your right heel, thumb outside and fingers inside. See if you can flat the feet, Alex. And then the left hand down, yes, thumb outside, fingers inside. Get a full grip with the palms. If you need to keep the hands on the hips, that's perfectly fine. And then take a deep breath. Continuously keep pushing forward your legs and hips and stomach. Continuously keep pushing. Don't stop pushing. Everybody push, push more. To make sure your back hurts, I want 360 degree angle backward bending for the gravitation. Bring your hands back to the hips. Lift your chest up, spine straight. Push forward, come up. And then turn around, lie down, relax on your back, Savasana. That's it, Alec. You did exactly right. Yeah, even if you don't exactly get the heels today and you keep the hands on the hips and just keep leaning backwards, eventually like all that stuff is going to stretch out, right? And then you get the grip on the heels. If you get the grip on the heels, then you keep pushing forward, right? And now you have the anchor there to continue to push, right? But start where you are, use what you got, do what you can and just see what happens. Second one, flex your feet, arms over the head, cross your thumbs, inhale, breathing, sit up, grab your toes, exhale, double jerk, point to the knees, elbows to the floor. Second set, uh, camel. This might help go back a little bit. Uh, you can open the knees up to eight inches, but keep six inches between the feet. So knees can be a little bit wider in the second set. Yeah, exactly. That. Almost like a slight V shape. Good. Bring the hands to the hips so your fingers point down to the floor and the thumbs are on the outside. Beautiful, like this. Now take a deep breath, your hips forward, drop your head back, and now just lean back halfway. So you can use those leg muscles to help you go backwards. That's it. And just keep leaning back and leaning back and leaning back. And as soon as you cut the distance enough to grab your foot, right hand down, grab the right heel, thumb outside, fingers inside. Now see if you can get the heel instead of the ankle. You're so close. Yes, the heel. And then you get the other one, yeah. And then just, you take your time, take a deep breath and slowly push everything forward now. The stomach, legs and hips gotta push forward. That's it, and just take your time. Continuous to keep pushing, don't stop pushing. Good, Monica, everybody push, push more. Keep on pushing, don't stop pushing. Everybody push, push more. Now bring your hands back to the hips and lift your chest and push forward and come out. Look at that, see? And then turn around, lie down, relax on your back, Savasana. Nice one, Courtney. That's it, Alex. See, that's it, it's like you just slowly move in the direction Anything that's in your way, you learn how to clear it out of your way. And then you just take your into your millimeter or your foot or whatever you got today. Be happy with that, you know. And then every day you come, you just body just starts to heal. Not always deeper, but always something shifting. Flex your feet, arms over the head, cross your thumbs, inhale, breathing. Sit up, grab your toes, exhale, double jerk, forehead to the knees, elbows to the floor. Let's do rabbit pose, sasangasana. Sit down, kneel down position. If you have a towel, you can put the towel on top of the feet if you're sweaty for the grip. If not, no worries. Grab your heels uh, with the thumbs on the outside and the fingers on the inside. And pull your heels as much as possible. Tuck your chin to your chest. Look at your stomach. And then slowly go down front side till you touch your forehead to your knees. And then automatically the top of your head will go down on the floor. Exhale, breathing, lift your hips up all the way as high as possible and roll forward like a wheel until you can get your arms and your elbows straight. If not yet, you're on the way. And then there's a gap between the knees and the forehead over the time in the posture. You can figure out how to walk your knees forward one by one. 
Okay, bring the heels together and keep the feet on the floor. Lift your hips up and lift your shoulders away from the ears to create more space in the upper back. That's it, and roll like a wheel. And change, come up. And then when you're up, turn around, lie down, relax on your back, Savasana. Oh, that vicious dog is attacking you, Aurelia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, flex your feet, arms over the head, cross the thumbs, inhale, breathing, sit up, grab the toes, exhale, double jerk, forward to the knees, elbows to the floor. Okay, second set, rabbit. Sit down, kneel down position. Bring the towel over your feet if you have it. No worries if you don't. Grab your heels over the towel or just grab your heels. Thumbs outside, fingers inside. You get a nice grip with the hands. Don't lose the grip. Relax the shoulders. Okay, pull your heels, tuck your chin to the chest and looking at your stomach. That's it. So you create a little bit more flexion of the spine. You get a little bit more of the stomach in. You feel it in the lower back and then go down. Touch your forehead to the knees and then the top of the head goes down on the floor. And then exhale, breathing and lift your hips up and roll forward to get the arms straight. Good, Antonio. And there's a gap between the knees and the forehead. You walk the knees forward. Yeah, you lost your grip. Maybe better to let the feet separate than lose the grip that much. <clears throat> because you can always bring the heels back together once you have the grip. Bring your heels together. Lift your shoulders away from the ears. Suck your stomach in. Get the hips to lift up higher. Roll like a wheel. And change. Come up. What a beautiful second set, everybody. That's a good one, Monica. Your head went off of the camera, but I was watching your spine. It looked great. Okay, turn around, lie down, relax on your back, Savasana. It takes something, you know, not even in an airy fairy way, but if you learn how to accept yourself the way that you are, you can get so much out of this class. I don't even just mean emotionally. When you come up against something, instead of being frustrated that you can't do something, it leaves your mind fully available to perceive what can you do about it. Flex your feet, arms over the head, cross your thumbs. Inhale, breathing, sit up, grab your toes. Exhale, double jerk, forward to the knees, elbows to the floor. We had time, I'm probably gonna end a few minutes late. Okay, sit face in the front, right leg out, left leg in. Have you got an appointment to go to, I understand. But if not, hang with me. Okay, right leg out, left leg in. Create pressure with the sole of your left foot against your right thigh. So you make a 90 degree angle with your legs. That should help square your hips off. Arm up over the head, turn to the right side, go down and grab your right foot and interlock your fingers a couple of inches below your toes. Pull your toes and flex your foot. That's it. Yeah, interlock grip is important. It's okay to bend the knee a little bit. And bend the elbows down. Tuck your chin to the chest like you did for rabbit. That's it. And then without having to tense a lot of other things, push your heel out and flex your foot. See if you can feel that flexing of the foot, that always helps. And now roll inside to the left, left elbow down, left shoulder down. As you roll inside Aurelia, create more pressure with the foot against the thigh. So the hips will even off as you roll inside, that's it. And then get the head in a little bit closer with the stomach, push the right knee down. That was great and change, come up. Okay, left leg out, right leg in. Create pressure with the sole of the foot against the thigh. I often give double corrections because when you do one thing, it pulls on something else. Okay, turn to the left side, go down and grab your left foot. You know, sometimes you get one correction. You're like, oh, that makes this stick. Good, I'm gonna give you both at the same time. But that's literally what you do. The more that you create pressure with the sole of your foot against the thigh, the more you roll inside to the right, right elbow down, right shoulder down, right? So you can get your hips to square off, the right knee stays touching the floor and you learn how to get your head in closer with your stomach create more compression and push the left knee down. Wow, change, come up, good everybody. It's like a living, breathing, everything moving thing. Both legs out in front of you, lie down on your back for stretching pose. Right away, do the sit up and then grab your big toes with your index and the middle fingers. Yeah, so the peace sign fingers, index and the big one. Pull your big toes and walk your hips back. Yeah, you just slip those fingers right in between the big toe and the second toe and pull them and walk the hips back and flex your feet. Flex the feet again helps to connect with the legs and you walk the hips back until you get both of your knees locked. If not yet today, you're on the way. Flex your feet and push the backs of your knees down on the floor and you flex the feet, heels come up, bend your elbows down. <clears throat> Think in this posture, knees straight. So a lot of times like the knees really want really see how much you can straighten the knees out on the floor and flex the feet. Even if the feet separate a little bit, I want your knees straight and then you'll learn how to bring the ankles together, right? Back to the knees down on the floor, flex the feet, heels in the air, bend the elbows and come down, pull the toes and stretch your body forward from the lower spine. Your goal, to touch the head to the feet. Yeah. 
and change. Wow. Woo. That's some hard work, Antonio. You can rest now. <laughs> Be face the back, head face the front, lie down, relax. These two postures together, head to knee with stretching, you can do so much healing in the hips, you know, when you get the knees locked and flex the feet. Okay, flex the feet, arm the way across your thumbs, inhale, breathing, sit up, grab the toes, exhale, double jerk, forward to the knees, elbows to the floor. And it's a good preparation before we do um, spine twist. Okay, sit face in the front, right leg out, left leg in, create pressure with the sole of your foot against the thigh, a 90 degree angle with your legs, like a capital letter L. Bring your arms up over the head and turn to the right side and go down and interlock your fingers a couple of inches below your right toes. Now pull the toes and flex the foot. You can get the leg as straight as you're able. Tuck your chin to the chest, look at your stomach and put the forehead onto the knee. That's it. Good Courtney. Yeah, a little bit more compression with the legs and a little bit more bring the head in closer to the stomach like rabbit. If you're in the head to knee pose and the elbows are touching the floor, see if you can get the head to come in closer with the stomach and get more compression so you feel more compression on the last five vertebra of your spine nice change come up left leg out right leg in create pressure with the sole of the foot against the thigh 90 degree angle with your legs arms over the head turn to the left go down and grab your left foot and interlock the fingers a couple of inches below your toes pull the toes and flex your feet uh your foot tuck your chin to the chest look at the stomach forehead on the knee yeah, it doesn't have to be everything tightening up, but more you learn how to push the heel forward, turn the foot in from the ankle towards the face, get all five toes to start to turn back towards you, right? This is a great practice for standing head to knee because you don't have to balance. Suck your stomach in, tuck your chin in, get the head in closer in the stomach, roll inside to the right, good, create pressure with the sole of the foot, make more compression and change, come up. Wow, beautiful, everybody. Okay, both legs out in front of you, we're stretching pose, Paschimottanasana. Lie down on your back, quick, do the sit up. Still optional. If you got back pain, don't worry. Nothing pain in this class. Grab the big toes from the top with the index and the middle fingers. Pull the big toes as hard as possible and flex your feet. Walk your hips back until you can get the knees straight. Never pain. If you're chronically in pain, that's your baseline. Obviously, that's not just going to like go away, but never more pain. Back to the knees down on the floor. Flex the feet. Heels come up off the floor in the air and then bend the elbows. All right, beautiful, Aurelia. Now I'm going to give you some slowly push the even the insides of the knees on the floor. And what would it take to really flex the feet in a way that your toes would even out? Your ankles would even out. Yeah, like the feet were flat on the wall in front of you. Push the back to the knees down, heels forward, flex the feet. Beautiful, good. Bend the elbows down and bring the body closer to the legs and pull the toes and stretch your body forward from the lower spine. Yeah, Courtney. Even when I say change, if you want to go for that last bit, go ahead. The last chance, pull the toes, stretch and stretch and stretch and change. Come up. Wow, Karen, good focus. And then when you're up, turn around, lie down, relax on your back, Savasana. <clears throat> Just great. All that, and then we end up with another spine twist. The more you learn how to stretch and connect the spine, the better this twist goes. Flex the feet, arms over the head, cross the thumbs, inhale, breathing. Sit up, grab the toes, exhale, double jerk, forward to the knees, elbows to the floor. And then sit facing the, well, I guess wherever for you guys, camera or the front, wherever way you want to face. But bend your left leg on the floor so you point your left knee out in front of you, and then put your right foot over your left knee corner so that your heel touches with the knee corner and the foot is flat on the floor. Both of the hips are down on the floor comfortably with the spine straight position. So I think is the right way with the camera. Alex, switch your legs and then put your heel with your knee corner so your right foot is flat on the floor. Yes. Oh, did I mess up? No, you had the right legs. I can't tell with the cameras because they're all switched off. So to me, it looks like the other side. Okay, put your right foot flat on the floor and then bring your left arm up over your right leg and put your exactly elbow against the knee and push your knee back with the help of the elbow. Now you're confusing me which one is left and right. Left knee out in front of you down on the floor and then right foot over your knee to put the foot flat on the floor. I know it's so much in this one. Right knee, uh, left knee out in front of you on the floor. Yep. So it goes down. Yes, in that one. Now bring the left arm up over the right leg, put your elbow against the knee and push your right knee back with the help of your um, elbow. 
and reach down and grab your left knee with your left hand. Sorry, left, left hand. So the uh, hand, heel, knee, I'll touch the same spot on the floor. Oh my gosh, I know. All right, push the knee back with the help of the elbow and turn your wrist and grab the knee. And then lift your chest and bring the right arm around in the back with the palm facing out. Try to grab the thigh behind you with the right hand fingers. Yeah, go the other way with the arm. You got it. Yeah, you got it. So you're twisting back that way. That's it. Now, more you can get the hips to stay on the floor and more you lift the chest, more you get the spine stacked so you can open the rib cage and you look back over your shoulder, just like triangle. That's it, chin to the shoulder and more the chest open. Great. And you twist the body back all the way. Twist and twist and twist and twist and change. Beautiful. Okay, that was good. Okay, switch the leg. Bend the right leg on the floor. This one is so hard. There's so many right and left. You're just starting out this practice. So bend, yeah, perfect. Now, bring your right arm up over the left leg. Put your exactly elbow against the knee and push your knee back with the elbow. Push the knee back with the elbow and make your left foot flat on the floor so you can grab your right knee with your right hand. Yeah, you got to push the knee out of the way with the elbow and grab the right knee with the right hand. Okay, bring the left arm around in the back with the palm facing out. Grab the thigh behind you with your left hand fingers. That's it. If you need to, you can keep the hand on the floor for support and then lift your chest. Beautiful. That's it and look back over the shoulder. Very gently, push the knee back with the help of the elbow, left foot flat on the floor, both hips down on the floor comfortably, open the rib cage and bring the head back more. Yeah, whatever you can do to stack the spine, one more time, Antonio, to get the chest to pull through and the chest to open up so your head can stay straight and then you look back more. Good, yes, twist and twist and twist and twist and change. Good, Monica, that's the one. And then turn around. Great job, Alex. That's the one. That is the most confusing one. It's even confusing me to say. I'm like, bend the left leg and put the right foot and put the left arm and then the left elbow and the right elbow. So you did so good. And then breathe and relax. And each time you come, you hear a little bit more and you just add things in. And I'll tell you what, we only do one set of that one. So you don't even have to do another one. We got one more breathing exercise and then you're done. Flex the feet, arms over the head, cross the thumbs, inhale, breathing. Sit up, grab your toes, exhale, double jerk, forward to the knees, elbows to the floor. Next time, I'm just going to say, wave your left hand. Then I'll know all the sides. All right. Okay. Sit down, kneel down position. <laughs> it's like some people's cameras are mirrored and some people's aren't. It really messes me up sometimes. Okay. Let's do the hands on the knees, spine straight position, and relax your shoulders. Perfect. That one, Monica. If you have to cross the legs, that's fine. Just make sure you can get the spine straight. It looks like it is. It's beautiful. So you can pull the belly in. So in this breathing exercise, you just pull your belly in and out. There's no inhale. There's only an exhale. And you just let the inhale happen automatically. Okay, relax your shoulders, spine straight position, swallow a couple of times and begin. Okay, your mouth gets dried out, lick your lips and swallow a couple of times. Second set, we do it a little bit faster. So just continue to focus on just pulling the belly. It might not go in as much because we're doing it a little bit quicker. Swallow and begin. <laughs> You made it. I made it. Good. We made it. <laughs> when you're ready, turn around, lie down, relax on your back. Savasana. Whew. Oh my gosh. All right. And then you just settle in. Relax. Oh, these are the time where a lot of things can let go when chronic tension can release. The things that we hold on to so all the time, we don't even know that we hold on to them. You will have to experiment and try things out for yourself. And you will not be sure 
of what you are doing. That's all right. You're feeling your way into the thing. Experiment, experiment, experiment until it finally flows from within you. It's a hard road, but the result is also a deep inner satisfaction. It is common sense to take a method and try it. If it fails, just admit it to yourself and then try another. But above all, try something. <laughs>